In this video, you will learn how to simulate a single stage extrusion process using isothermal module of FDEX 2D, the intelligent metal forming simulator. Let's get started with the process type first. Since the geometries of the workpiece and the dies are axisymmetric, we will carry out a 2D axisymmetric simulation. The temperature change is neglected in the simulation. The information about the material is given on the left side. The dimensions of the workpiece are as shown in the figure on the left. The material of the workpiece is a steel grade and its initial temperature is equal to that of room temperature. Law of Coulomb friction with its frictional coefficient of 0.1 is used as a frictional condition in this extrusion process. A constant velocity condition will be used in the simulation as the material is rate independent. The upper die will move downward with a constant velocity of 1 mm per second and the lower die will remain stationary. The problem definition is complete. The result of the simulation would be an extruded component as can be seen on the right side. In this video, you will also learn how to use the local mesh density function and the function to define the workpiece hardening in FDEX. So now, let's get started. Double click on FDEX icon to execute FDEX in your computer. Click on New to define a new process. In this process information window we will clearly define the process type. This is 2D axisymmetric cold forging process. So we will make the selections accordingly. Select extrusion from the different process categories listed below bulk forming. Select cold forming and 2D axisymmetric simulation. We select Newton as the unit of force, so the unit of stress will be megapascal. This will be a flow analysis which means only the mechanical effects of deformation of the workpiece will be considered in the simulation. Select elastoplastic deformation type. This means the elastic component of deformation is also considered in the simulation in addition to the plastic deformation. Since this process does not have any flash, select regular type under flash. Click OK. This is the main window of FDEX. We will use the toolbar to set up the simulation step by step. First step is to import the geometry. Click on model, from file and then select the geometry file in DXF format. Click open and then click OK. Click yes to make the overall process automatic. Note that you can get this geometry file inside your FDEX installation folder. Let's move on to the second step which is to define the material property. Click on material from library and then select the steel grade AISI underscore 1010, T equals 20 degrees Celsius, and then click load. Now click close. The third step is to define the press machine type. As you know, we will use a constant velocity press. For using that, click on press, manual, enter minus 1 in the fifth column of the table. This means, making the press move downwards, in the negative y direction, with a constant velocity of 1 mm per second. Click OK. The fourth step is to select the friction formulation. Click on friction, from library and then select soap underscore cold, steel, click load and then close. The properties that were loaded so far will be assigned to the respective entities now. Right click on the steel grade and select to work pieces. This will assign the material grade to the work piece. Right click on V equals 0, minus 1 comma 0, and select to upper dies. Right click on soap underscore cold, steel, and then select to upper and lower dies. This will assign the friction formulation to all the dies in the simulation. Now we have completed the definition and assignment of properties to the dies and the workpiece. The next step is to position the dies properly. For this, we will use the positioner tool of FDEX. Double click on stage 1 and click on positioner icon on this toolbar. Click auto icon. This will enable automatic positioning of the dies. Click OK. For stage 1 stroke definition, double click on forming 1. This will open the forming control window of stage 1. Select time from the drop down menu next to stop criterion and enter a value of 15. This is the stop criterion for the stage meaning that, when the process time reaches a value of 15 seconds, the solver will automatically stop the simulation. 
After doing this, click on Output Divisions. We will increase the number of solution steps used in the simulation. Select User Defined below Number of Solution Steps. Enter a value of 1000. Now it's time to define the workpiece hardening. We will do this by defining the effective strain with respect to the radius of the workpiece. Click on Reset. Select Horizontal from the drop-down list and click Advanced. This opens a new window. Click Insert 6 times. This will add 6 rows for data entry. Enter the data as you can see on the screen. At radius 0 mm, enter a strain value equals 0.0. At radius 3 mm, enter a strain value equals 0.1. At radius 6 mm, enter a strain value equals 0.2. At radius 9 mm, enter a strain value equals 0.3. At radius 12 mm, enter a strain value equals 0.4. At radius 15 mm, enter a strain value equals 0.5. Click OK. Now let's learn to use the local mesh density function of FDEX. Before using the local mesh density function, you must be aware of the die numbering and point ID terminology in FDEX. The die numbering starts with the first upper die and it increases sequentially from there on. Upper die will be die ID 1. Lower die will be die ID 2. To know the point ID, double click on the DXF file under any one of the dies. This opens the geometry file in a new window. Now click on auto edit. This displays the point ID for every point in the die. This way, you can know the point ID for every coordinate in a die. Having learned about the die ID and point ID in FDEX, let's go into the step where we define the local mesh density. Double click on process control and click on I default. Click on the I default column next to 15. This will open a new mesh density window. From the drop down list, select circle, plus 2 use die corner. We will use a die to create a local mesh next to this die corner. Enter a die ID equals 2. Point ID equals 1. Radius equals 5. Weight equals 3. Click Add. Click OK. In the Process Control window, click OK again. We are almost done with the simulation setup process. We just have to save the simulation, check, and run it. Click on the Save icon, enter a file name. And then click Save. Your simulation file is now saved. The final step is to check the simulation to see if we have set it up correctly. Click on the tick mark button on the toolbar. In the window that opens, click check. This will let you know the error messages if there are any. The notice messages can be ignored at this step. After making sure that there are no error messages, click run. This area shows stage-wise and overall progress of the simulation. On the right side are the different state variables that can be visualized based on the simulation. You can explore more on this section to investigate the state variables of your interest. The media tools here allow you to visualize the deformation behavior of the process.